to another short and sweet where the samples and reviews are short. And it's really sweet that it was shared with us. This one is thanks to John Wadsworth. This is a 1973 Wild Turkey 101 eight year. So Chad, what you're telling me is if we had just waited until January to open this, then not to open it, but to do this review, then it would be 50 years old, 50 years since this it, it was, on the was shelf. released on the shelf. Yeah. I, oh, I can um, smell it from here. It's beautiful. Whoa, it's beautiful. And it's just regular, I mean, regular Wild Turkey 101. And some people are probably like getting into this review right now and being like, why would I watch this about something that I can't have? It's important to understand our history. It really is important to understand <laughs> like where turkey came from and where it is now. We both really love vintage turkey. It's something that we kind of use as a measuring stick when we do vintage tastings. Like, is this better or worse than vintage turkey? It's like how everyone else uses Elijah Craig barrel proof, uh, mm. you know, 12 year when talking about anything barrel proof and over $60. So like what I could get. Chad, I just knows this and it literally gave me a spine chill, like all the way down. <sighs> you know, it has vintage noses, vintage funk, if you will, just, is different from modern day. Mm -hmm. What makes the difference? I don't know. We're going to do an episode on that at some point. Just Gosh, rich and thick. I mean, the color, the color, Duke, the color. It's beautiful just, brown sugar yeah. notes, such rich caramel. They get so caramely. Oh, yeah. All right. To your health. Huh, yeah. It's like simultaneously so desserty butterscotch caramel brown sugar and also with the oak. Mm -hmm. But they are in perfect harmony so that one is not more than the other. You're like, is it too oaky? No, because no. the sweetness is, the dessertiness is kind of pulling yeah. it back, right? You know, we don't want to just completely gush on it. I will try to pick out some, some flaws. I okay. was expecting a more uh, luxurious, exceptional mouthfeel. I don't feel like it mm. really flowed over. Like, you know, when we had that 1983 Old Granddad 114 uh, at Justin's and it was just like, what is happening? You sure. know, there wasn't that reaction on this. I guess I wasn't expecting that because of the proof difference. So well, just the 114. The color, the smell. It is a bit misleading. It's not bad, the mouthfeel. Mm -mm. It's just not exceptional, right? It's fine. It's yeah. a normal turkey 101 mouthfeel. Like, I don't really expect mm -hmm. much there. I'm just trying to find some negative. You're trying to find a negative? Yeah. Um, there is criticism. a hint of funk in there. Yeah, but is that in that in the endearing? I think it's funk endearing. Way? Yeah. I think it's endearing for a vintage. But I think the thing you want to look for is if it's cloudy. This sample yeah, not, not cloudy. cloudy at all. It's, it's just been a well loved. Beautiful, beautiful color. My first thought after having the sip was, I can't wait until the next time we have good friends over because I want to give everyone a dram. Thing. Say, John, who? This is from us. <laughs> Who's John? We'll say John Wadsworth blesses you. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, let me ask you this. Is the nose better than the taste? Oh, that's a good question. The nose is something I wish I could like make a perfume out of. Yeah, I would almost say the nose is the best part of this. <sighs> Me and the nose are over here having a moment. The finish, it's not really long. As I said, it doesn't have a super great mouthfeel. It's got a, it's got a really good respectful mouthfeel, but not like super great. Mm. Not a super long finish. It doesn't really give the Kentucky hug. Mm -hmm. And the aftertaste or the finish doesn't have the same luxurious things as that palette. So I'd probably mm -hmm. go nose palette and then finish in that order. What about yeah, you? Yeah, I don't know. Finish and mouthfeel I could interchange. Like I didn't it's, even say it's mouthfeel. It's got some mouthfeel. Finish for me, it goes a little, a touch dry. Um, and like that oakiness kind of almost turns into a bitterness, but not quite. It's not my favorite finish ever, but I just love the whole experience of getting to try this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You so, know what other experience that I like? It's whiskeyambitions.com. It's where you can get the Glen Cairns that we're drinking from, both of the t-shirts that we're wearing, hats, hoodies, uh, postcards, challenge coins, bottle cut candles, and more always coming soon at whiskeyambitions.com. You can become a patron at patreon.com slash it's bourbonite and join our community for as little as one buck a month. And that is where we release our exclusive barrel picks and after the episode exclusives. Mm. Ultimately, I just think this is a really cool experience. I love when people try a vintage pour for the first time. Mm -hmm. Like I love seeing their faces when they get oh, the opportunity. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you can try every distillery that's on the bourbon trail, every distillery that's outside the bourbon trail. Modern day, right? Modern day and think you've got, got all the knowledge. 
but until you try a, a vintage, and we're meaning like 70s, 80s, and you know, some 90s, some 90s stuff, stuff too, you're missing a, a complete category of, mm -hmm. uh, of bourbon, especially like shuttered distilleries, you know, like and Sitzel Weller, um, National yeah. Distillers, that Oof. type of stuff. Hey, uh, if you haven't subscribed to us already, we'd love to have you. You can do so by clicking right up here. There's suggestions of other videos right down here. We hope to see you over there in one of those. Thanks, Sarah. Mm. Thanks, Chad. Thank you, John. Until next time, drink more bourbon.